Hey everyone, welcome to another week overview. Uh, I am here with Kyle and we are going to bring you up to speed with what we're going to be looking at this Sunday as we join into another Zoom conversation. So we have just finished up Growing in Hope where we looked at different ways God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit work together and give us reason to have hope, to have reason to pursue life. Now we've switched topics and, and Kyle was a, a huge uh, influence of, of this, but we're looking at uh, David, the life of David and how God has worked in his life and looking at um, practical examples of David's life into our own life. So uh, Kyle is gonna join me today and we're just gonna kind of talk through this first week of the Bible plan that we'll be talking about on Sunday. So, um, Kyle, you kind of were kind of uh, the, the pusher for this. What made you think of wanting to study the book of uh, David? Or not the book of David, um, the life of David. Um, I think probably the biggest thing is, he, I think he's just such an interesting um, character in the Bible. Um, he's an example for, to all of us to look up to, but at the same time, he's definitely a flawed person. He's done some terrible things, but um, he's he's not like the most perfect person and it's just really interesting that way yeah you see you see the good and you know you know god says you know this is a man after my own heart but yet at the same time like like you said like he messed up big time and yeah kind of gives us hope but also i don't like a very tactile uh way of following god so all right let's go ahead and we're going to jump in and this is going to be our overview and some of the topics we're going to be talking about on sunday so first the thing that we need to realize about David and most often we know David as you know David and Goliath or King David but I want us to hop back and look at his life before you know he became I guess what you could call famous uh, and, and that brings us to our first point is that before all of these great things happened David was literally the youngest of his family and just a shepherd boy and I think it's important to realize even in our life too, that he was faithful and he was um, really a hard worker, even in something that seemed pointless or that seemed unimportant. He took care of that and he worked well on that. Um, and, and, you know, even coming into the second point where while David was a shepherd, he learned to trust God in the little things. Um, obviously there's two accounts where, where a bear attacked and a lion attacked and God gave him the ability to defend himself which thinking about it now having a lion attack me doesn't seem like a little thing um, but he learned to trust God so when he came up against Goliath when he came into his his reign as king he already knew he was already aware of the ability to trust God Kyle what are some thoughts about kind of David's life kind of before uh, he got in the limelight yeah um, I just find it kind of interesting because a lot of characters in the Bible um I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them start out not following God right away. But I think David was at it from the beginning, and throughout his life, he uh, encountered many of his troubles that way. Yeah, and it's cool to see kind of like the longevity of, and the ups and downs of his faith, which are huge. Um, and one, and a couple of questions I think we're going to wrestle with come Sunday, uh, when we think about trusting God, we, we again we go back to David's life as, as a shepherd where you wouldn't give a second thought to him um, and as I'm talking to you Kyle it is kind of funny you know Noah being so involved with sheep and talking about shepherds so it's kind of funny you know it's like oh yeah I have a little brother that yes we sent him to the sheep as well um, but I think sometimes it's so easy for us to maybe miss times where God has been faithful or to miss um, times God has blessed us did we miss them or or we forget them? we just move on with what we want or, or the rest of our life and sometimes and i think this could have this could have been um david from the get-go and noah you mentioned this that excuse me kyle you mentioned that i have too many names going around in my head that david could have been just angry and bitter and and just complained about god why do i have to be the youngest why do I have to be the one watching sheep? But rather he didn't complain about a situation, but sought God during that time. So that's gonna be a couple of things we're gonna look at is, is what are 
what are blessings God has given us? How has he shown himself faithful? And maybe what are things in our life that, that we complain about rather than seeing God's goodness? Um, switching view, so we see David as a shepherd, but then the, the rest of the week, as you follow this devotional, uh, we look at what does it mean for, for Christ to be our shepherd? Uh, we see that in 1 Samuel 17, 14 through 15, Ezekiel 34, 15 through 16, Isaiah 40, 11, our, our chapter that God's continually saying, you know, I am the shepherd, you are my sheep. I am your shepherd, you are my sheep. Um, and, and Kyle, I'll let you maybe hop in. As it repeats itself over and over again about God being the shepherd, we his sheep. What does that really mean to us? Um, I think it really means, like when I think about um, sheep, I always think about out in the farm and how um, the farmer always is there for the sheep. He's always going to take care of, of the sheep because, I mean, the sheep is worth a lot to the farmer. And I think we're worth a lot to God because um, we're his children. The, the price, the, the value that, that God sees in us is huge. Yeah. Uh, and as we look at that, we're going to start looking at, at a few different things. One, that, that Jesus is our shepherd. And like uh, Kyle said, the, the shepherd, the, the farmer, is there for the sheep. He, they don't abandon their sheep. If they were to abandon their sheep, the, the sheep would you know, wander or starve or, or whatever else. And we, it's important for us to see that, that God hasn't abandoned us. God doesn't leave us, doesn't forget about us. But he's always there and he comforts us. And he's also there to care for us. Um, I think sometimes we want to see like, maybe like, okay, God created, he set everything to motion and then he pulled back. Um, that's like a theory called the watchmaker theory. Um, and it's that's kind of dangerous for us because if, if a farmer were to just like get a sheep, throw it some food and say, you're good, I'll come back for you, you know, when I'm ready to take you to the slaughterhouse, that wouldn't work. Like the sheep would, would die or get lost or run away long before it's time. But rather the farmer has to stay there. The same is with God. God can't just start something and then just leave us. He's always there. And our God is strong. Isaiah 40, 11 talks about that, that, that God's not just watching us. He's able to protect us. And Psalms 100 verse 3 talks about God always being with us. And this is going to be the thought that Kyle and I are going to leave us or leave us with. Is this idea that sometimes when we have a constant in our life, we tend to take it for granted. Or sometimes we tend to get annoyed with it. Um, Kyle, maybe what are some things that maybe up until this point, before this whole Corona thing, that have been kind of constants in your constant in your life, and now that you, they're not there anymore, you've kind of like really saw the value that they had initially. Yeah, um, probably the biggest thing right now is I've um, had some form of rehearsal in my life almost every single day since sophomore year, and just all of a sudden stopping and not having rehearsal is just absolutely insane for me because I'm always doing something and just having an end it reminds me of how much I love just going to rehearsal and meeting with my friends and um, performing and acting and singing. Yeah, there's those times where, you know, at, at some point, sometimes rehearsals were grueling or just like, oh, do I got to go to another one? And we start looking at the negatives and we forget the value of what it was to us. And sometimes I think if we're not careful, we can do that with God. God is always there. God is eternally past, present, and he's forever in the future. And sometimes we can take that for granted. You know, uh, Kyle, you mentioned rehearsal. Maybe for us, maybe even in, in a broader sense, maybe that's even school. You know, we complain probably about school all the time, and all of a sudden it's not there. It's like, oh man, I just... I wish that aspect was back in my life. I wish, I wish we could go to school again, um, which is so weird to say because for so long you've complained about it or, or wanted a time off and now that it's gone, you're like, I wish I had that back. And I think sometimes we can do that with God and, and maybe that's the season we're in right now where we've kind of just like pushed God off and said, you know what, I'll take a break from youth group or I'll take a break from church. And it's until like, we start pulling away or we or until something bad happens we don't really see the value of god or sometimes 
we get annoyed with God, like, oh, it's another another no or another thing we can't do, rather than seeing the blessing of that. So that's going to be another thing that we're going to wrestle with this Sunday is it's so amazing to have God with us all the time, but sometimes we take him for granted. And I think um, we need to be movement makers for what God has for us because he is always there. So guys, uh, I'd encourage you guys to to hop on the Bible app. I know you guys are on your phones almost all day. Uh, make it worth it. Hop on the Bible app. Uh, there'll be a, a link on the Facebook page, on the Instagram page. Hop on that. Be in this devotion. It, it literally takes like, I don't know, Kyle, how long would you say? Like two minutes? Three minutes? Yeah. yeah. They're short. Like You can do it. And we'd love for you to join us. And it would add to this discussion. So hop on the devotional. And we will see you guys Sunday night at six. We'll see you then. Bye.